Hello and welcome back for a third episode of Growing Avocado Trees from Seeds. It's day 142. Seven days ago, each plant out of my six plants received on average half a gallon of dissolved miracle Grow fertilizer. I followed the instructions. I thought that would be okay. Uh, one large scoop per gallon. But if you look at the second set of leaves, um, they all seem to be curled except for that one that's higher on the left and maybe the newest one in the back on top. So there's one leaf here on the left that looks like it has leaf burn. This leaf that I'm looking at right now is curled. I don't know if that damage can be undone by further growth in the upcoming days. We'll see. And here's a leaf burn that I'm talking about. It's basically salt burn. So what happens is when the concentration of salt and other solutes in the soil mixture or whatever your growing medium is, is too high, then that sucks water out of the plant versus the normal process of the root system of the plant sucking in water from the soil. And there seems to be a tilt in the stem as well. You can see that in the background. So I'm sensing a general loss of turgor pressure. So it's not too bad now, but if I were to add more fertilizer and hence more solutes into the sand soil mixture, that would be disastrous. But even just going down this route, it could be pretty disastrous as well. The leaf development will be all gnarly. So I've seen that in the past and not always knew what it was. But now it's pretty obvious after that last fertilization. So I thought about it for a while. And my course of action is to do a couple of tap water flushes, which I'm doing right now. So after I realized the error, of my ways. I flushed all my pots with tap water multiple times to get rid of excess salt and solutes. So the way I have my pot set up is I have usually inch and a half or two inches of space vertically on the top before I get to the rim of the pot. And since these don't drain very well, all I can do is to flood them. Actually the avocado pot does drain better than the other ones, even though they're all supposed to be the same 75% sand, 25% clay soil mixture. I did get the clay soil on different dates though. So depending on where I dug that up from, there could be a different composition of clay, uh, silt, and sand. Greater percentage of sand and silt versus clay in a soil sample means the permeability will be that much better. Water and oxygen can get through much easier. Sand is the biggest kind of particle in soil. Silt is smaller and clay is very, very small, sometimes just several atoms wide in particle size. So it's day 149. I did another flush of all the pots with tap water four days ago. Nonetheless, this small original leaf has been recycled for its nutrients by the plant. So that tends to signal that there's not enough um, nutrients being taken up. But in this case, I, I know that's not true because I blasted everything with fertilizer before. Sometimes uh, plants under whatever kind of stress just do that. So that's no real loss unless it keeps happening. Uh, these leaves are still kind of curly, a little bit too uh, convex for my taste. But I think given my response to the situation, uh, this is the best I could have hoped for. That leaf that's facing away from us is the one that's uh, the most curled. And even this new leaf on top is very, very curled. So hopefully I can get enough growth over the upcoming weeks to kind of flatten things out. And I think I will. So it's day 155. I did another great tap water flush three days ago. So there's not much change in this mature foliage on the bottom. But as you can see, the leaves, uh, the second set of leaves are getting really really big um, especially the new leaf you can tell there's no issues from salt burn if you look at the mature leaves they have this dark green thick appearance and ruffled edges versus this leaf that we're looking at right in front of us it's all light yellow green and waxy so that seems to be the natural progression of how the leaves develop they end up looking like this and they start off being um, a light green, maybe even a light yellow green. And some of these just never get bigger in size. Uh, the plant definitely 
picks and chooses like it does with the mango as to which ones it's going to really put in resources to develop to a large size like these two. They're basically the size of a, a child's forearm. So they're huge. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting a recovery on this order of magnitude. I thought, well, maybe these uh, second set of leaves are just wasted. You know, they're just going to look bad and all curly and be gnarled and malformed. But most of them recovered. The one that's pointing away from us, um, that's really curly. But the rest look fine to me. And it looks like we have more leaves on the way. So the size of this plant is uh, starting to become impressive and I'm going to do a little bit of pruning work. I don't like this uh, salt burn leaf. I don't think it serves any purpose. I could always wait for the plant to recycle the nutrients but that generally takes a really long time and while I'm at it I'll just get rid of that tiny little vestigial leaf as I call them um, attached to the stem between the first and the second sets of leaves. So we have plenty of leaf mass. There's a lot of real estate here for photosynthesis, although there's no direct sun hitting this balcony still. So I'm thinking the sun has to be on a different trajectory, or the earth rather. So that means maybe during winter we'll get direct sun for many hours on this balcony, but maybe you know the, the months bordering the summer solstice get nothing. So um, there's a lot of heat right now. I mean, I wouldn't say it's all disadvantages. Um, certainly, I think my plants will try to compensate by growing much, much bigger leaves to uh, capture whatever indirect sunlight, you know, the low thousands of lux probably um, versus the 20 to 120,000 um, lux that they would be receiving in direct sunlight uh, throughout the day. So doing more of this uh, flood watering as I call it on top and I think I'm on the right track I don't believe that just even doing this uh, kind of watering filling up to the rim you know even half a dozen times will wash out all the fertilizer in there but maybe that's a good thing maybe you do want some of that residual fertilizer in there and nutrients so it's day 162 another heat wave came got up to the low 90s. If you look at the tops of the pots, they all dry out at different rates. So um, the composition is, is different. This one dried out the fastest, but part of that is due to the fact that these leaves are so big. Avocado is a real water hog. Despite that fact, it's very easy still to tell that this pot drains a lot faster just by flood watering all the way to the rim and watching this one drain out much faster than the others. So um, I'm not going to do a transplant to ameliorate the situation for any of these existing pots. I think they do have sufficient permeability to water and oxygen to thrive. All of my plants are currently doing well. But I think for future series I might further um, dilute the clay soil percentage, so to speak, and just have it be one-eighth of the entire mix and seven eighths of it will be sand so that way um, I can get water to go through much quicker and hence uh, wash away any salts and solutes that are stuck in there plus all that extra oxygen getting into the root system will result in much more robust growth more robust than what you're even seeing here so it looks like some new leaves are on the way third set um, this thing is about 65 centimeters tall, maybe it's about like two feet tall. So it's seen a pretty good amount of growth for how long has it been? Uh, 162 days. So this is definitely way further than I've ever gotten with any of my other avocado growing attempts. And it looks healthy and the good news is I might not even need much fertilizer at all, maybe just a pinch. If I were to keep this up and do nothing but flush with gallon after gallon of tap water, my primary concern would be a lack of nutrients in the soil. But then again, there is a lot of clay in here still, and compared to those people that just grow an avocado seed in water and just develop a full-on sapling sitting in a jar of water after several years indoors, um, 
I think this will do a lot better than that. Certainly it will grow a lot faster and be a lot more robust. I'm not that worried, but as for the other plants, uh, I'll have a wait and see attitude. But for now, things are going really well, so why not just continue this? Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates.